Hey peeps, for this series I'm actually going to be watching over my recorded videos for Dark Souls, the first Dark Souls game, and I essentially just recorded uh, the boss fights. I'm pretty sure I recorded all the boss fights, or if I'm missing any, just a few. I didn't record, you know, like most of my gameplay when I was playing through this game. I played through it last year, I believe, last March, and I played the original on the PS3 for a while with no guide, you know, going in blind, and I did enjoy it in a masochistic way. You have to be a bit of a masochist to play and enjoy Dark Souls, but since I was doing it without a guide, uh, I was blind and I missed a bunch of stuff. And I was doing so bad, and I kind of just gave up uh, at the third boss with the gargoyles and just left it. Uh, and then I waited until they remastered it because I wanted them to fix Blight Town and not deal with those problems when I, when I actually wanted to commit to an entire playthrough. Dark Souls was a game series that I put off for a very long time. Here's the intro. In the Age of Ancients. And I decided to the world was unformed. For the character I created, Shrouded I decided to fog. go Pyromancer. A land of grey crags, arch trees, and everlasting dragons. Dragons. Dragons are always cool. But then there was fire. And with fire. I do like how this game has a lot of fire symbolism. A lot of uh, stories and literature focus on fire symbolism. And death. The tale of Prometheus. And of course, Jack London is to build a fire. And dark. Yeah, Fahrenheit 451 focuses on fire. The Dark Souls way of symbolizing then fire is from the very dark, interesting. They came. And found the souls of lords. I am very interested in Dark Souls lore. I have watched a lot of videos about the lore. And you know, all the different theories people have. Nito. I think it's very interesting. The first of the dead. The witch of Isolith and her daughters of chaos. We're gonna Fight and kill all the these Lord guys of later. Sunlight. Gwyn and his baby is the final knights. boss. And the furtive pygmy, so easily forgotten. The pygmy is like big uh, question mark. It's been a while since I uh, reviewed With the lore. The of I Lord's forgot a lot uh, about what they happened. Challenge the dragons. Wind's mighty bolts peeled apart their stone skins. The witches weaved great firestorms. I'm really into fantasy stuff. Lord of Rings, Game of Thrones, Dark Souls. I love it. Death and disease. And Seath, the scales, yes, see. the train design, the and the dragons. Cutting off his tail to get a weapon. He'd be a lot of difficulties. Pretty interesting opening scene. Thus began the Age of Fire. But soon the flames will fade, and only dark will remain. So I recorded my playthrough of the introductory sequence now, of the game. There are only embers. And then after that, I only focus on recording the boss fights. Not light, but only endless lights. So the first episode will be the, the intro, the introductory portion of the game, and of the, the first three boss fights. Keep in mind for the later 
videos, I do over level so the game might not seem as hard when I'm playing it compared to like other people's playthroughs because I do over level to make up for my lack of skill. Like I'm okay at Dark Souls, but I'm not the not that great. Yes, indeed. So I try to over level the to compensate. Brands and I also use a lot of cheap tactics. I use a lot of and in uh, this land, cheap ways, cheap strategies to beat the bosses. The undead are corralled and led to the north. And when I played through it, I did look up a video guide. Mainly because I wanted to make sure I collected all the items. Where they are and I didn't miss anything. Away to await the end For some of the, the bosses, I just went in blind. Just, okay, let me just try to fight the boss. See what happens. And because I overleveled so much, most of the bosses weren't too bad. My fate. The thing about Dark Souls, it makes you feel so weak, so helpless, and you die so much. But gradually, as you get better, you get stronger. When you beat a boss in Dark Souls, the sense of fulfillment and accomplishment you get from beating a boss in this game way surpasses any satisfaction you get from beating a boss in any other game. When you finally overcome that challenge that seemed impossible, you figure it out, you deal with the stiff gameplay mechanics, the terrain, sometimes the glitchy moments. Now there's this constant debate, well is there a debate? I think people who like Dark Souls don't think there's any debate. Um, the idea that Dark Souls is very difficult but fair. And that if you die, it's always due to your own mistakes. And due to you need to improve, learn new strategies, become familiar with their enemies and your terrain and the traps that the game puts. The people who don't like Dark Souls, who think it's too hard, probably think it's really unfair and that the controls are too stiff. I personally, well I agree it's really hard at times, but not the, it's not like the whole game is super hard, it's just certain parts, like Light Town, Sen's Fortress, and Orlando and those goddamn archers. If you guys have, if any of you guys have played this game, you know what I'm talking about. And overall, I feel like most of the game is fair, is fine. There are some moments still that I feel like, oh wow, that is just dumb. Like if an enemy knocks you off and you just fall to your death. Or whenever you die, you need to recover your souls, which is what you use to level up. Um, and purchase items and things. If the spot you died is in this location that's just too difficult to get to, and then you die again trying to get there, that's not a good feeling. I really hate that feeling, you know? But that's what contributes to the challenge of the game. Death does truly have meaning. Whether it's learning from your hundreds and hundreds of deaths or whether the punishment for dying where you lose your souls and you have to recover them often only just to die again or die while you're trying to recover your souls so much hardship in this game it's a good representation of life and how hard life is But I played games that are more unfair than Dark Souls. So that's why I don't necessarily agree that it's unfair. But I don't completely agree that it's always fair. Because some of those, some parts of this game, like the archers I mentioned in Honor Londor, Londo, Honor Londo, that's not fair. That's just screwed up. That's just a, like, 
it's my most hated part of the game, you know. And the way I get past that is just I just use poison arrows to kill those archers from far away. And I have to wait for like 10, 15, I don't remember how long. I just wait for the poison to kill them. Yeah, this game is all about timing. You have to manage your health, your stamina, because if you don't have stamina you can't attack or dodge or do anything. So you can't just go in and just spam the attack button. It's all about timing, knowing when to attack, when to dodge. Oh, you. You're no hollow. Thank goodness. I'm not going to bother I'm explaining the backstory in Lord of the Dark Souls because there's just way too much. <laughs> I'm just going to try to remember. Um, you and I, we're both undead. Hear me out, will you? This is another game that has a really good atmosphere. I have failed in my mission, but perhaps you can keep the torch lit. And your choices do make a difference. Like you could choose to kill any of the NPCs you see for whatever reason. There are consequences with that. And it automatically saves every time you do an action. You can't try to do an action and then like reload a save file, you know. No. And I can die with hope in my heart. I guess unless you do a backup save, oh, maybe thing. there's a way to cheat the system that way. Here, take this. An Estus flask. An undead favor. And there's no real pause oh. button either. Oh. Like if and you this. open your menu, the game still continues. So now you can't like during a boss battle, you I'm can't just pause the game death. to like you know so go now. prepare or think. think. No. The game will just keep going. If you're looking at your menu, in a boss fight, the boss will just kill you. And a lot of bosses just kill you in like two or three hits. I still need to play the finish playing Dark Souls 2 and play Dark Souls 3 and Bloodborne and Sekiro. Uh, I played through the beginning of Dark Souls 2, but I put it off. Oh, I got my Pyromancy Flame. I haven't tried Dark Souls 3 yet. I have all the games though. I bought them as a collection. Ah, Estus Flasks. I remember when I played this game the first time, during my blind playthrough, I didn't understand the mechanics. Uh, how you go like upgrade your Estus flasks to have more of them. I really wish I knew that. One thing I have a bad habit of doing though is I lose track of my stamina or I put my shield up too long. Which slows down your stamina recovery. I actually do have a lot of bad habits when I play Dark Souls. But I still feel pretty accomplished I managed to beat this game. Twice, actually. Oh yeah, this tactic. Double wield, uh, or you put two hands on your weapon to increase damage and jump from above. That takes you half the life of the first boss. It makes it super easy. Like I said, I, I resort to a lot of cheap tactics to beat these bosses. I know, at least. So yeah, I made the first boss look like a PNC. And he is. First boss is pretty easy. Oh yeah, and there's all these hints that people can leave. I don't like the PvP. Uh, maybe you guys are a fan of the PvP, that's great, but I don't like the PvP mechanics, how players can just invade your world at any time and kill you. I never, I have never won in PvP. Because <laughs> I never want to do it. Let's see. Alright. This is later in the game. After, um... Uh, you know, there's... What's the hub world called? Oh, I forgot the name. Uh, but yeah, after you get to the hub world, you meet the NPCs, and this is like the first real area. I'm just kind of running past everything, because I just want to get to the boss. Because I kind of, um... Practice the route. 
maybe like a dozen times. Uh, so that I could learn how to get to the boss without losing any health. I think this boss took me a few tries. During my first blind playthrough, after I beat the boss, something happened. Um, but all the souls I got from the boss, I ended up losing them somehow. I think it was because of the dragon that comes after. It just kills you if you just run down the bridge. And I lost all my souls. And then when I tried to go back, I just died again. And I just got... I felt so dejected. I'm like, oh... Will I ever try to play through this game all the way through? I don't know, based on how it makes me feel. But then I took a break from the game, came back to it, knew what to expect. And again, I admit, I did look up a walkthrough of this game, or I watched a video playthrough. But mainly, uh, like, mainly to collect items, because I wanted to make sure I collected it. Only for some of the hardest bosses did I actually look up like how to beat them. A lot of them I just tried to go in blind just to see what it was like. Or I didn't bother using the strategies that other people suggested. Because in Dark Souls, like your character is unique. If you want to make them like a magic user or whatever weapon you want to use, whatever type of build, there are a lot of different options, which is cool. Very cool. But for someone who's like playing it for the first time and they don't really understand the stats and whatnot, it's so easy to just mess up how you distribute your stats. And I already had an idea, basically, of the type of build I wanted to aim for. I do it right now. Let me skip this part. All right. Walk through. I'm very uh, methodical when I play Dark Souls. I take my time and I try to be very careful. Yeah, I'm gonna use a tactic where I clear this area and I just climb up, do a jump attack on the boss, climb back up, do a jump attack. Yeah, just repeat that. Oh yeah, I got my uh, Uchi Katana. That's my favorite weapon. That's the weapon I use the most in this playthrough. Yeah, I have a thing for, uh, for katanas. The Dark Souls gives me the option to use them as my weapon of choice. They're really good in this game. In the first Dark Souls game. I am up the ladder. You can actually land his hit on you when you're trying to climb up. Jump attack. I think I forgot to do it. Forgot to. Wait, no, I can do it. I'm gonna judge my gameplay. I'm wasting my stamina dodging. You also panic, so that messes up your timing. Because you can die so easily so in this game. I forget if you can jump up. Oh, do I climb up one more time, or do I just try to. Yeah, yeah. There were a couple times where after I landed the uh, jump attack, I would try to uh, finish him off, but I would just get killed. Alright, I think I'm gonna just finish it. Again, I'm using very cheap tactics here. Don't worry, not all of my boss fights are climbing up places and full jump attacks. Not all of them. Just a couple of them. Alright, so that does it for that boss. Um, Alright, now for the gargoyle boss. During my first playthrough, I got stuck at this cathedral part of the game. I 
did know about the blacksmith for any upgraded weapons. But during this playthrough, with the new arch I had, I upgraded my sword. That's why it's doing so much damage. I think I'm trying to cut his tail off. I think I failed the first time. Because he can cut off the tails of some enemies to get their weapon. Yeah, I wasn't able to beat the gargoyles during my first play because I didn't know I could upgrade my weapon. I didn't have a uh, Gatana. And I was just randomly distributing my stats in ways I didn't know I was doing. Wow, I made that look so easy. So yeah, that's the first portion of the game. The first few bosses. I'm going to go ahead and end the first episode right here. Again, these episodes are just me watching and commenting on all my boss fights that I've recorded for Dark Souls. So hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I will see you guys next time. Take care everyone.